DMenu for the longest time has been my application launcher of choice. It is a great little application that does exactly what it needs to do. It is not a fancy looking application, there's no fancy crazy features. It opens up a list of the binaries in my system and I can run them. That's all it needs to do, nothing else. But one of the issues that DMenu does have is it's made with Xorg in mind. Now it does work perfectly well running through XWayland, but if I'm going to be trying out these different Wayland compositors, whether it's Sway, Hyperland, LabWC, or anything else out there, I might as well try some of these native Wayland options, because it's not like there is a lack of tools out there. There are tons of options out there, all with their own separate but still fairly similar goals, especially when looking at the category of D-Menu and Rothy clones. But the one that I've settled on has one simple goal in mind. This application is called Toppy. It's not only not aiming to be this crazy fancy thing, it is also aiming to be basically as quick as you can possibly get. Now, according to the GitHub, this is only going to run on WL Roots based compositors, meaning it likely has some protocol extension requirement only supported inside of WL Roots. From what I saw, it doesn't actually list out that protocol, so if you're not using WL Roots, I couldn't tell you if it is going to work. It is made for WL Roots, so for anything else, it's going to be fairly hit and miss. Now, out of the box, it does not look the way that I'm running it. So the config file is located inside of your .config directory, like most config files, and then inside of a folder called Toffee, and the file is called config. Let's just temporarily rename this, and then rerun the application. It actually looks something like this out of the box, more like Rothy would. So this is both a Rothy and a D-menu clone, but as you've probably seen from my channel, I generally prefer the D-Menu look, so that's what I'm going to be using for the rest of the video. So like D-Menu and like Rothy, this can run in a bunch of different modes. If you just run Toffee by itself, it is going to run the same way that D-Menu would. So with nothing there, it's not really going to do much. But if I was to do something like, say, echo the word hi into Toffee, now we're going to have a prompt that includes that word. This is going to accept a new line separated input, so if I did something like, say, cat my ZSHRC into Toffee, now every line of my ZSHRC is going to be a separate option. Obviously, it's not really useful for doing something like this, but if I wanted to do something like the way my bookmark handler works, this right now is still running with D-Menu, but all of my bookmarks my browser are in this file, and all on separate lines. But the second and third modes are the way you're generally going to be using Toffee. The second mode we have is Toffee-Run. This is going to open up a list of all of the binaries, and then we can go and search through every binary in my system. Whether that's something like OBS, whether it's something like Brave, or anything else I have. And if we go and select something, let's say Brave, it's not actually going to run it. D-Menu Run would automatically do so. In this case, it just spits out the name, allowing you to decide the way that you want it to be run. So on Sway, for example, there is a specific way you can launch things, but you might just want to go and launch it from your shell. So while Toffee Run includes everything inside of your path variable, which is the way that I generally like to use it, if you don't want to do that and only want to include your desktop entries, this is done with Toffee-Drun. This is only going to show things that have desktop entries on your system. Generally, this is going to be GUI applications, but there's a few exceptions besides that as well. Or obviously, if you've written your own desktop entries, those are going to be included as well. I don't really make that many for myself, but things like my editor here can be kind of useful. This is used for opening up a terminal and then opening NVIM in that. Now, unlike Toffee Run, where it can be kind of unclear how you want a binary to be opened, one of the purposes of a desktop entry is to tell the system how to open an application. So with Toffee D Run, you can include the option dash dash D Run dash launch equals true. And then if we go and select something, let's say Alacrity, for example, that is going to be opened. Now, out of the box, Toffee is going to perform basically like any other sort of D-menu clone, being quite fast because it's not really rendering that much, but really nothing to write home about. So if you want to get the absolute most performance out of this application, the dev recommends making a couple of tweaks. The first thing is by far the most important option, 
don't rely on font lookups, set the font you want to be using. So by default, Toffee is going to use Pango for font rendering, which on Linux looks up the fonts via font config. And this works great if you need a font. You just don't really care about what font it is. It's the monospace font. It's the sans serif font. This works great. But if you want it to be considerably quicker, pass a path to a font file into the application with the dash dash font option, for example, like this right here. Then Toffee will skip any font searching and use HalfBuzz and Cairo instead to load the font and display the text. This massively speeds up startup, font loading under one millisecond. Secondly, set a smaller width and height. Obviously, rendering less on your screen is going to take less time to render. But if you're using a D menu style layout like I am, this is going to render quickly on pretty much anything. It really only matters if you're using one of the Rofi layouts. Even then, it's not a big deal unless you're using a slow older system. In the same vein, limit the number of results being shown on the screen. If there is less on the screen, there is less to render. Right now, I'm showing 10 results. I don't think I've actually set this. I think this might be the default. But if I was really concerned about it, I'd lower it down to 5 or maybe even 3. I've got a relatively modern system. I've got a 3600X and an RX 570. By no means the fastest thing out there. But when it comes to brute forcing a window like this, it certainly does the job. And another basic rendering thing. Don't set a selection match color or a selection background because... Obviously, rendering more colors is going to take more time to render. Now, the next thing is more of a getting into the weeds of how font rendering works. Disabling font hinting. So font hinting is a way to make sure your fonts basically look crisp. And if you're using a relatively high DPI screen with a large font size, the effect of not having font hinting isn't really going to be that big of a deal. But as it says here, your mileage may vary. Also, when it's something that's going to be on your screen for like maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds at absolute most, I don't really think it's that big of a deal anyway. Like, I don't care if the font looks good. I open it and I close it. That is the end of the day. I don't really care. And then the last thing is late keyboard init. Basically, passing this option will delay keyboard initialization until after the first draw to the screen. So when the application has first been drawn at least once, meaning that key presses will be missed until then. So it's disabled by default. Now, this is probably not that big of a deal unless you open up your app launcher and the instant you do, you start typing. Most people have, you know, a reaction time. And usually if you have a reaction time, by the time you react, the application is probably going to be open. Now all of the options we see here, whether it's late keyboard and it, whether it's hint font, selection match color, num results, or anything else, these don't have to be set as options. If you want them to be set all of the time, this application does its configuration in a really, really nice way. So if we go over to that config file, once again, that is located inside of your .config folder, inside of the Toffee folder, and then inside of the config file, every value that you see in this config is also an option with the exact same name. The only difference is when it's an option, let's say with hint font, it is dash dash hint dash font, and now in the config file, it is hint dash font. Basically just take off the dash dash, and it's exactly the same. On the note of configuration, one great thing this application does is let's say we make a mistake in the config. Let's say I misspelled padding right, for example. I forgot to put the N and the G on. If we now go and save this and then open up any form of Toffee from our config, what is going to happen is it's still going to work, but it's going to tell us there is a mistake in the config. I generally like when it works and then it still prints out the output. Sometimes I've had applications where they just instantly crash and I have no idea why they're not working. Now, when it comes to my theme, it's a pretty basic one, but like I would recommend for basically any other application is don't make a theme from scratch. That's really dumb. Just go and download one of the existing themes and then modify it to your liking. I started with theme slash D menu and then went from there. It's much easier than just writing out the boilerplate anyway. And I'm not going to go into it today, but there is a lot of theming options available. If we go man toffee.5, you'll see there is a lot of things that we can set. 
whether it's the styling, actually most of it is in the styling, pretty much anything you could possibly want to modify, everything is being exposed. If you can't find something you want to set, I guess go and ask the developer, but it's probably already here. So D-Menu is still going to be what I use over on the Xorg side. I see no reason to go and replace it. It's still doing exactly what I need. But I've been using Toffee over on Sway probably for a good maybe month or so now, and it's been great. Like, it's pretty much been perfect. There was one issue I had early on where it didn't work properly on my vertical monitors. Also, it didn't have key repeating, but the dev has been really active and both these issues have been addressed. So if you're using Wayland, let me know what app launcher you're using. Are you using something from the X side like Rofi or Dmenu and then running it through X Wayland, or are you using a native Wayland solution? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become a... I have to go and click it. One of these amazing people over here, I hate Wayland right now. <laughs> Go check out Patreon, subscribe to the Verify link down below. I can't wait till we get Global Hotkeys, it'll be great. Uh, podcast, Tegrity, Gaming Channel, Rotor and Plays. Um, that's going to be it for me. I'm out.